The guest is Mr. Homer Wheaton, and of course he's talking about coming to Tennessee State University. And uh, of course, Mr. Wheaton, let's uh, pick up where we left off with uh, you arriving by train uh, to uh, Tennessee State University uh, right out of Mississippi and for the first time, real time, coming to uh, a larger place. <laughs> Well, uh, Dr. Haney, as I indicated a few moments ago, I come from the country, and of course, coming to a big city where I'd never been before, I was quite frightened about the experience that I would have uh, in Nashville. And I remember uh, when I got off the, got off the train uh, at the station here in Nashville, uh, I got a cab to the campus. In retrospect, I know now that it, he really was not. He really was not a person who had a license mm -hmm. to run a cab mm -hmm. in Nashville. Mm -hmm. It was somebody who was just picking up folks that mm -hmm. he could pick up at the station and take to where he was going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was a bit interesting. I uh, he took me uh, to uh, East Dormitory mm -hmm. at uh, Tennessee and I, and I State College, and I uh, went into the dormitory and uh, asked the person at the desk if he could uh, help me to get in touch with Dr. Flowers. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Flowers, again, is the person who was responsible mm -hmm. for me coming mm -hmm. here. So this guy's name was Mabins. Mm -hmm. So Mabins said to me that, uh, young man, you don't need to see Dr. Flowers. Mm -hmm. You need a room. You need to see me. <laughs> so then uh, uh, mm -hmm. Maven assigned me to a room mm -hmm. in his dormitory. So the next couple of days, I was involved in orientation and still had not had the opportunity to meet Dr. Flowers, mm -hmm. whom I had not met. Mm -hmm. He, again, was the person who was going to give me a scholarship. Mm -hmm. So after about two days, my roommate uh, was from Tennessee, West Tennessee, and he came from very poor circumstances, didn't have any money to pay his mm -hmm. way in the school. And I think uh, his ag teacher had contacted Dr. Davis, who was going to arrange for this young man to go to college. Mm -hmm. So uh, this boy, whose name was Spencer Davis, mm -hmm. uh, encouraged me to go with him over to the president's uh, office to see how he was going to register, mm -hmm. uh, to have money to mm -hmm. register. So uh, when we got to the president's office, uh, he was in conference. We told the secretary why we were there, and she asked us to have a seat, mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, Dr. Davis would be available in a few minutes. So when uh, a few minutes later, uh, the door to the president's office opened and out stepped Dr. Flowers. <laughs> uh, and my roommate knew that I wanted to see Dr. Flowers, so he began to introduce me to Dr. Flowers. Uh, uh, Dr. Flowers, this is Homer Whedon. He's from Mississippi, and he needs to see you. <laughs> so Dr. Flowers asked me if I was a young man from Baxter down at uh, Dr. Grantham's mm -hmm. uh, community. Mm -hmm. And I was so afraid, I said, yes, ma'am, <laughs> loud and clear. And Dr. Flowers broke out mm -hmm. in the biggest mm -hmm. laugh. Mm -hmm. And he laughed about that until he died. <laughs> but he, uh, he, he told me what to do and when mm -hmm. the uh, scholarship would be mm -hmm. available. And uh, I shall always be grateful to him mm -hmm. for what he did for getting me to Tennessee State mm -hmm. University for get me the scholarship mm -hmm. and he also uh got me a job on the uh institutional student employment program mm -hmm. and uh i remained on that program for the four years that i was in school now this is institutional student employment what, what does i mean how did that operate uh, it's kind of we call it work aid uh, mm -hmm. uh as a part of the president's budget uh he money for certain support staff like secretaries and mm -hmm. those kind of people uh, were put in w to, to one budget, and the president had the privilege to to also hire students and pay them from that same budget mm -hmm. uh, to work for the university. Mm -hmm. and, and I was able to do that, and uh, I pretty much paid my way through college for four years mm -hmm. on that program. Mm -hmm. It might be interesting to you uh, to know uh, what it cost to attend mm -hmm. Tennessee A&I State College mm -hmm. when I came in 1944. Mm -hmm. uh, incidentally, the scholarship that Dr. Flowers gave me was for $100. Mm -hmm. At that time, the school operated on a quarter basis. Mm -hmm. 
the total cost for attending school for a quarter, mm -hmm. including room, board, tuition, our mm -hmm. state fees, mm -hmm. was eighty-four dollars and seventy cents. Mm -hmm. So the scholarship that he gave me mm -hmm. covered the cost for the entire quarter. Mm -hmm. He gave me about sixteen dollars back, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, of course the. Uh, um, uh, Dr. Flowers told my father to give me $100 and send me to Tennessee State. Daddy gave me $150 uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, and sent me, and I took my $150 to a citizen savings bank and opened up me a bank account uh -huh, uh -huh. and uh, kept a bank account during most of my years at, at Tennessee State uh -huh. because the work aid job that I had kept paying my fees uh -huh. after the first semester. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I... Uh, I was making about thirty-five dollars a month on that program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you mentioned working the, that you met the president. I mean, to, to tell us something about my president. Well, that was the first time I met Dr. Davis. Uh, I didn't know at the time that I would get to know him much better mm -hmm. uh, later. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess Dr. Davis, in trying to uh, develop a staff at the university. Uh, kind of put his eye on a few people that he wanted to watch to see mm -hmm. how they developed uh, to de decide whether or not he wanted to invite them to uh, come back to work for the university. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, I went on and finished college and, and took a job down at Shelbyville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. uh, teaching veterans. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Davis, as you probably know, was a, a, liked to hunt quail and squirrels mm -hmm. and rabbits. He was a great huntsman, outdoorsman. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we had some of the best squirrel hunting mm -hmm. uh, territory down in uh, Shepherdville you could find anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, he would come down to Shepherdville two or three times a week during the squirrel season to mm -hmm. hunt squirrels with me. Mm -hmm. And I could put him in just the best hunting environment that he could ever mm -hmm. want to be in. Mm -hmm. And he could really do it without doing a lot of walking. Mm -hmm. Normally, when you mm -hmm. think about going squirrel hunting, you think you got to walk deep into mm -hmm. the forest. Mm -hmm. But I could take him out the highway, and within uh, 100 yards, mm -hmm. I could have him in some of the best squirrel uh, territory in the country. Mm -hmm. And he could go out there, and he could kill the limitless squirrels, and we could mm -hmm. get back in the car within an hour, mm -hmm. and he could head back to Nashville. And he, certainly enjoyed that, and he'd come back and have breakfast and, okay. and head to the office. And of course, uh, uh, Mr. Sweet, let's take a second commercial break, after which we'll come back and pick up at that point. Okay. We're talking to Mr. Holmes.